Okay. All right. So um, what 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 I'll do today is basically a very I think quite basic things lah. I think many of you have uh, have uh, uh, many of you knew already those uh, these things that I'm gonna talk about. And then um, I think my third year pun I pernah pernah give the same uh, lecture lah. So many of you should actually still remember what I'm gonna tell. But I do think uh, when you understand the pathophysiology behind things, you won't get confused. Um, when you understand the pathophysiology, you'll understand why certain diseases, certain problem present uh, with this kind of problem. You'll understand why certain diseases, uh, you can understand the presentation, you can understand why certain complications happen, and you can understand also why we initiated certain types of treatment. So, because everything goes back to the uh, basis uh, of the diseases. We are not going to go in deep detail because this is not a part of, this is not a part of physiology, not a physiology in the lecture. So, this is how um, I, as a clinician, understand certain pathophysiology of uh, behind certain certain problems and i do think it's going to be helpful especially kalau kita yang jenis um, so uh, like me i'm not i'm not that good in terms of memorizing things i know my memory is not that good so um, rather than memorizing things i prefer to understand so uh, i do think bila kita memorize things ialah baguslah kita hafal tapi sometimes Bila kita, bila someone trigger us, someone uh, a question, sometimes kita boleh switch, kan? Uh, uh, daripada uh, apa nama uh, systolic murmur jadi diastolic murmur, for example, kan? So kita jadi confused. Nah, sebab apa? Sebab uh, kita hafal uh, daripada uh, apa ni dal on percussion, stony dal kita confused. Ah, mana satu stony dal, mana satu dal, kan? Kita confused. Tapi bila kita understand the basis why those kind of problem happen, so I think macam tu kadang-kadang bila bila kita faham kan, bila orang tanya, kadang kita nak respond tu lambat sikit sebab kita nak kena think, uh, tapi we won't, bila kita faham tu, kita takkan be, people cannot, uh, kita punya pendirian, kita punya answer tu will be strong. People tak boleh nak kacau kita punya understanding tu because we we answer from our understanding, not from our memory. Because our memory ni can be can be changed. Our memory can be changed. Uh, our memory can actually be augmented. People can change uh, uh, whatever we recall. So that's the problem with memory. Memory can be altered. Memory can be changed. Memory can be... Uh, there's a lot of bias and so on and so forth. Tapi understanding, understanding, understanding is something else. Understanding is more strong. Understanding is more strong okay all right so um, uh, we've record this nanti i'll share you i'll give you the link lah eh? and then uh, you you all can use it later on as well again as i said uh, i'm not going to go in uh, very detail but most important is trying to understand can you see my whiteboard okay yes yes right. yes so let me Kena put it di sini. Okay, alright. So let's go with uh, understanding about um, uh, recipe first. Okay. What causes breath sounds? Kenapa bila kita oscultate, we can hear breath sounds? Kenapa? Why? Siapa boleh 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 bagi tahu? Ha, sambar nak jawab. Ha, kena. Kenapa ada breath sound? Sebab hmm. uh, movement of air into yeah, the... Yes. Because what we hear, sound is actually vibration. Sound is actually vibration. You can hear sound because there's vibration. So this vibration is carried, is transmitted through medium. What's the medium? The medium can be air, the medium can be solid, the medium can be fluid. And this uh, medium transmits the vibration that vibration gets inside our external auditory meters because of the our external auditory meters ni our ear pina and then dia makin kecil masuk dalam dalam our our uh, external auditory meters ni so the amplify kan the vibration a bit 
kan our our the shape of our ear ni di amplify kan the vibration a bit and it vibrates our tympanic membrane and that vibration is carried forward to the ossicle bones so sound is vibration sound is vibration and vibration is caused by flow of movement of 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 things lah movement of movement of air movement of fluid movement of anything and this vibration are also transmitted through certain mediums as well okay so that's the basis if you look at fl uh, fluid contohnya kan fluid the movement dia macam ni dia ada uh, dia ada yang kita panggil lamina flow so lamina flow ni dia flow yang clear aja kan flow yang straight je bila lamina flow there's no sound bila lamina flow there's not much sound sebab there's not much vibration lamina flow kan dia flow macam ni straight kan contoh this is a this is a, a, a tube kalau lamina flow dia straight je kan sometimes because of friction kat sini dia akan ada sikit turbulent flow kat tepi-tepi ni kan but the sound is very minimal sebab turbulent flow created just because of friction between the fluid air fluid or anything with the surface kat sini so that's why turbulent flow created sikit dia but it's lamina flow kalau pipe pun kan you buka pipe it's a lamina flow you will see that there's no there's not much sound kan tapi bila dia ada turbulent flow you can hear there's a lot of vibration there's a lot of movement kan so this is what causes uh, a sound so kalau you imagine eh, this is a this is a tube kan this is a tube this is a tube kan kita keluar air kan the lamina flow contohnya lamina flow ada sikit bunyi dekat tepi-tepi ni sebab apa sebab there's a, ada secretion ada surface tension ada friction so dia ada okey kalau kita delete contoh contoh ni jangan kita boleh balik okey so kat sini you see okay. so kat sini dia oh you kenapa dia tukar so kat sini dia dia lamina flow kan dia lamina flow kan dekat tepi-tepi dia because of secretion because of the fluid dekat tepi-tepi dia because of ada friction kan dia ada turbulent flow kat tepi ni so dia ada some sound that we can hear okay so ini dia punya opening dia then you introduce an obstruction here you introduce an obstruction kat sini obstruction dia can be contoh ni kita letak jari kita alamak kenapa lari dia macam ni sorry eh my thing ni sometimes dia pelik-pelik sikit okay so my hold the pen so sometimes if you introduce an obstruction kat sini you introduce an obstruction dekat sini contohnya you letak your finger what will happen kalau dia keluar biasa dia straight kan dia keluar lamina juga tapi bila you introduce obstruction what happens here bila dia keluar sini ada area yang lamina tapi most area sini sebab volume dia sama keluar dia akan cause turbulent flow kan dia akan cause turbulent flow so what happens dia punya sound dia akan akan more more vibe more turbulent flow more vibration more more sound kan tapi adakah volume dia different volume dia sama contohnya kan you see, yang ambil paip getah paip kan you isi satu baldi daripada pili tu sampai ke getah paip dia lamina flow dengan ada sikit turbulent flow dekat tepi-tepi dia dekat tepi-tepi dia ada sikit turbulent flow so you can still hear some sound tapi sound dia is uh, not that loud kan masuk dalam baldi lepas tu you introduce you letak you kepit dengan jari you tutup what will you tutup sikit you tutup mungkin two third ke one third dia you buka what happens velocity of the fluid tu akan laju flow rate dia akan increase kan flow rate dia akan akan increase uh, tapi tapi dia punya velocity dia velocity dia increase kan velocity dia increase tapi actually flow rate dia sama berapa liters per minit dia sama volume dia sama kita kepit hujung hujung getah paip tu will it uh, increase uh, adakah dia akan cepatkan sikit time untuk kita isi baldi tu tak tak sama the amount of time yang kita perlu untuk fill up that baldi tu is the same sama ada kita kepit ke kita tak kepit tapi bila kita kepit ni kita rasa sedap sikit sebab apa sebab bunyi dia lebih kuat kita nampak macam laju flow of uh, fluid tu kan air tu nampak laju velocity dia naik 
tapi flow rate dia dan juga dia punya volume dia remains the same. Okay, in a way, you need to remember velocity velocity equals to pitch. Frequency. Frequency equals to pitch. Kalau sound kan, sound kan dia move in a wave. Kan? Higher frequency equals to pitch. Amplitude is loudness. Kan? Kalau pitch dia macam ni, dengan higher frequency, amplitude sama. So, ni akan beza dari segi pitch dia. Yang ini low pitch, yang ini high pitch. High pitch ni macam mana? High pitch ni macam So that's high pitch sound. Low pitch sound ni grumbling sound. So that's low pitch sound. Kan high pitch sound ni that, that is a high pitch sound. So pitch is affected by the frequency and frequency is affected by the velocity as well. Uh, amplitude is what determines the loudness. Higher amplitude more loud, lower amplitude less loud. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing I want to show. Okay, in a way, bila you tengok kita punya airway kan, airway kita is just a set of tubes. Our airway is just a set of tubes. Some of the tubes are straight tubes. Some of the tubes, are, there's a lot of obstruction dalam dia. Contohnya dalam kita punya neck, kita punya nose ni. Kan ada turbinates, kan ada banyak groove dia dekat dalam, dekat belakang tu. And some of the grooves are actually uh, lined with Uh, the, the, the purpose is to uh, uh, control the flow of air kan sebab itu kita punya apa airway ni kita punya airway ni dia mesti wet kita punya apa airway ni dia tak boleh dry apa jadi bila dry bila movement of air tak ada tak ada secretion langsung dry je what will happen kita akan senang dapat bleeding kita senang dapat bleeding dalam hidung sebab itu contohnya you bagi iliadin oksimetazolin kan kita biasa bagi kan pernah tengok kita bagi iliadin oksimetazolin so budak-budak yang ada uh, nasal secretion kita bagi iliadin iliadin ni tak boleh bagi bila hidung dia dah dry so bila dia dry dia akan cause more dryness bila dia dry dia akan jadi senang bleeding lah sebab senang senang friction dan senang luka so our nose ni dia mesti ada fluid sebab itu bila kita letak nasal prong contohnya nasal prong, kita tak boleh direct macam tu je. Mesti ada humidifier dia. You nampak kan? Daripada 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 tong gas ke daripada wall oksigen tu, dia ada humidifier dulu. Dia ada dia ada apa? flow meter. Dia ada flow meter yang kita set berapa flow kita nak set. 10 liter ke 3 liter per minit ke kan? Nasal prong biasanya 3 liters. Kalau incident biasa not more than 2 liters of nasal prong. Lepas tu dia ada dia punya bekas bekas ada air dalam tu kan? Ada bekas air dalam tu. So this is a humidifier. So humidifier ni tujuan dia adalah kita nak humidify kan the air tu. Sebab bila air tu dry, problem dia adalah dia boleh damage kan kita punya airway kita. So airway kita mesti ada, mesti ada, mesti ada some, mesti ada uh, humidification lah. Okay. Bila kita punya uh, air tu move dalam kita punya is a is a is a track kan? Is a track daripada upper airway sampai ke lower airway. Okay. What differentiates between upper airway and lower airway? Apa demarcation dia? Shakira, what, where is the demarcation between upper airway dengan lower airway? Hmm, yang Karina tu ke? Itu pun tak ada di belakang kan? Karina, not really. Orang lain, siapa ada idea? What's the demarcation between upper airway and lower airway? So upper airway and lower airway is differentiated actually by your thoracic inlet. So if you imagine eh, ni daripada kita punya hidung dengan mulut lah. Kan masuk dalam trachea. Dan trachea ni dekat kerana kan. Lepas tu dia branch banyak kan. Okay. This is where your Contohnya lah, it's a very bad drawing lah. I'm not that good in drawing. So, so this is the thoracic inlet. 
So this is where it differentiates between upper airway and lower airway. So in a way, your trachea, trachea actually there are two parts. There are the part of the trachea that is lower airway and other part of trachea that is upper airway. Uh, and, and if you look at histology pun, it's a bit different. Uh, the squamous cell lining there is a bit different between upper airway dengan lower airway. Okay. So, kenapa kita differentiate between upper airway dengan lower airway? It's because how dia punya movement. How the uh, the movement of uh, uh, satu problem dia may be different. Diseases dia may be a bit different. And the sounds also may be a bit different. Okay. Um, inspiration and expiration. Which is... Uh, okay, macam ni. Inspiration, is it an active process or is it a passive process? Inspiration. Huh? Passive. In, inspiration is an active process. Active. Active. Expiration? Passive. passive. Expiration is a passive process, kan? So if you look at your lungs, the other the diaphragm, this is your diaphragm, kan? Your diaphragm. So diaphragm, bila diaphragm contract, muscle contract, dia jadi straight. Dia jadi straight. Bila dia contract, dia jadi straight. The, the, bila jadi straight, that, that is what causes the expansion of your chest. That is what causes the expansion of your chest. If you imagine juga sebab bentuk your bentuk bentuk ribs tu macam ni kan. Bentuk ribs tu macam ni bila ada intercostal muscle. Bila intercostal muscle contract, dia causes expansion. Contraction to cause expansion because of the shape of the rib tu. Kan? So, contraction of this muscle ni yang causes expansion of the chest. Kan? Chest expands. So, bila dia expand, what happens to the intrathoracic pressure? Intrathoracic pressure becomes negative. Macam kita sedut. It's a, it's a suction. There's a suction process kan. Bila ada pneumothorax, dia akan create space ni. So, he, kurang negative pressure dia. Kan? Bila plural space dia intact, there's negative pressure, there's vacuum inside the plural space. Bila chest dia expand, it creates a negative pressure inside the intrathoracic cavity. So, intrathoracic cavity becomes negative. So, that's how we suck air in, actively suck air in from external environment into the lungs. That's an active process. Tapi expiration is a passive process. It's just relaxation of all the muscles. It's just relaxation of the of the muscles. Bila dia relax, kan? Lung kita pun mula kecut balik. Uh, chest kita mula uh, kecut balik and then it pushes air out. It's a passive process. Okay. What type of breath sound yang kita ada? What are the types of breath sounds? Vesicular. Vesicular. Vesicular lagi? Bronchial breath sound. Okay. Is, is vesicular normal ke abnormal? Normal. Normal. Bronchial breath sound? Normal. Abnormal. Okay. Actually, both are normal sounds. Both vesicular breath sounds and bronchial breath sounds are normal breath sounds. In a way, again, as I said before, all these breath sounds are because of the turbulent flow, because of the vibration it created. Okay, if you look at the airway again, daripada atas ni dia besar, dia masuk ke sini. So this is a large caliber lumen. Large caliber lumen. Dia ada banyak, dia ada rugi dia, dia ada dia terbenik lah apa semua kan. So dia banyak turbulent flow dia created. Banyak turbulent flow, turbulent flow, turbulent flow. And so bila dekat sini, This, the sound is what created the turbulent is created by the turbulent flow kan tapi is a large caliber lumen so bila large caliber lumen you can hear the bila large caliber dia punya frekuensi dia low lah frekuensi dia low Kepat, lepas tu dia masuk ke smaller caliber lumen bila dia masuk kat smaller caliber lumen what happens to the velocity what happens to the frequency dia akan dia okay. macam macam kita picit pipe tadi lah kan pipe besar jadi pipe kecil sebab flow rate dia sama. Dia punya volume yang keluar dia sama. So dia terpaksa naikkan dia punya velocity. So frekuensi dia naik. Frekuensi dia naik. So bila frekuensi dia naik, what happens? Bunyi dia lebih low pitch sikit. So that's why you have 
vesicular breast sound. That's why you have vesicular breast sound. In a way, apa yang dekat tengah-tengah sini is bronchial breast sound. Apa yang dekat tepi-tepi sini, that is vesicular breast sound. So bronchial breast sounds are what you can hear. Bronchial breast sounds are the breast sounds that you can hear at the midline. If you auscultate areas where you have your trachea and also your main bronchus, you'll have the bronchial breast sound. That is a normal breast sound. And at the peripheries, you should hear vesicular breath sound. You should hear vesicular breath sound. Okay. I hope you know how to differentiate between bronchial breath sound and vesicular breath sound. Yang mana yang ada gap in between inspiration and expiration and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. So that's one thing. Okay, let's look at. Oops, aku nak delete semua. Saya satu ni terdelete semua. Terima kasih. Okay, let's look at consolidation pneumonia. Consolidation pneumonia. Eh? Okay, what are the what are the usual uh, physical findings? So kita akan tengok dari sudut. Okay, uh, kita akan tengok dari sudut. Uh, first kali is chest expansion. Chest expansion. Lepas tu kita tengok dari sudut breath sounds. Eh? Breath sounds. And then kita tengok dari sudut, apa lagi? Breath sounds, additional sounds. Additional sounds. Kita akan tengok dari sudut uh, uh, breath sounds, additional sounds. Kita tengok dari sudut uh, percussion. Percussion, kita tengok dari sudut uh, vocal resonance and vocal fremitus. Kita tengok dari sudut trachea. Eh, trachea kat atas ni. Okay. Alright. <coughs> Let's look at one by one. Okay. Let's look at one by one. So, pneumonia. Consolidation. What's the what's the pathophysiology behind pneumonia? What's the pathophysiology? Nama dia pun dah consolidation kan? So pneumonia, if you do x-ray, what can you see? You see consolidation, you see air bronchogram, you will see apa lagi? Ya itulah basically, mainly consolidation, air bronchograms. Kan? Air bronchogram maknanya apa? Maknanya, you can see the, the the structures the parenchyma surrounding the 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 the, the bronchus the bronchioles to become solidified kan consolidation maknanya ada part of the lung parenchyma become solidified kenapa because there's infection infection causes inflammation of the lung parenchyma and all this causes consolidative processes so lung parenchyma yang patutnya soft it becomes solidified some of it become consolidated dia gambar-gambar jadi consolidated. Okay. Again, you need to remember. Sounds, vibration are transmitted through mediums. What are the mediums? It can be air, it can be fluid, it can be solid. And all these mediums transmits sound, transmit vibration differently. And all this will affect how you perceive the sound. Okay. Pneumonia. What will happen to your trachea? Trachea now sama ke, shifted ke tak? Deviated ke tak? Trachea may be sama je. Sama. Sama je. Ha, sama saja. Kecuali kalau ada uh, uh, fibrosis lah. So, fibrosis akan tarik kan? So fibrosis akan pull the trachea towards the lesion. Sebab fibrosis dia tarik. Eh, fibrosis dia tarik. But generally trachea sama. What about chest expansion? Reduce on the affected side. Trachea sama. Chest expansion generally sebenarnya sama. Kecuali kalau dia lobar pneumonia yang besar. Kalau tak, chest, lobar pneumonia pun sampai chest expansion still sama. Sebab apa? So, chest expansion doesn't depend on the lung parenchyma. Chest expansion depends on your diaphragm. Kan? Depends on your diaphragm. Diaphragm tu, diaphragm and anterior, anterior chest muscles ni, dia boleh contract dia yang tarik kan. It doesn't really depend on what what's inside your lung. It depends on their chest wall, kan? Tapi kalau dia besar sangat, dia impair kan uh, uh, diaphragm punya movement, then uh, chest expansion akan affected. We'll see nanti apa effect dia. Okay. What about breath sounds? What are the breath sounds that we can hear? 
breast sound and additional sounds. Vesicular ke bronchial breast sounds? A and 3 dia macam mana? Bronchial breast sound and periphery. So you can hear bronchial breath sounds. A and 3 dia biasanya equal je lah. A and 3 equal. Kenapa kita boleh dengar bronchial breath sounds dekat periphery? Why? Kenapa kita boleh dengar bronchial breath sounds? I, I told you before, bronchial breath sounds are normal breath sounds dekat midline kan? Vesicular breath sounds are normal breath sounds dekat periphery. Uh, and, okay, the idea dia macam ni. Because some people, they assume bronchial breath sound is about some changes dekat periphery. But that's not right. You can hear bronchial breath sound dekat periphery. Bila you oscillate periphery tu, you can you, you oscillate dekat tempat ada consolidation tu. You can hear bronchial breath sounds is because how uh, vibration or sound is transmitted through different mediums. You, if you remember dulu, pernah belajar kan Rinis and Weber's test dengan tuning fork tu, ketang, you dengar. Kan? Sampai certain vibration, you tak dengar dah. Dekat air. The moment you letak dekat bone, sama dekat tengah ni, ataupun dekat belakang sini, the moment you letak dekat bone, you can still hear. Sebab apa? Sebab bone is solid. And solid is a better conductor of sound and vibration. So, if you look at uh, solid, air dengan fluid. So solid is the best conductor of vibration. Solid is the best conductor of sound. Kan? And fluid. Among the three, fluid is the worst conductor of sound and vibration. And fluid is the worst conductor of sound and vibration. Kan? Fluid boleh conduct sound, boleh conduct vibration tak? Yes, it can, of course. Kan, kalau tak macam mana kita boleh nampak ombak dan sebagainya. Macam mana sona dekat kapal. Boleh. Kan? But if you compare between between air, fluid and solid. A fluid is the worst conductor of vibration and sound. Kan? Solid is the best. So, bila ada consolidation. Kan, bila ada consolidation, it transmits the sound from the midline. Because it's a solid Kan, solid is the best conductor of sound and vibration. So that's why bila ada consolidation, bila ada pneumonia, you can hear bronchial breath sound. And that bronchial breath sound is a transmitted bronchial breath sound from the midline. Okay. What are the other additional sounds yang kita boleh dengar? Kita boleh dengar apa? Crepitation lah eh. Crepitation. Ha so craps ataupun uh, crackles so crepitations atau crackles kenapa kita dengar crepitations because of secretion lah kan dia ada dia ada dia ada uh, uh, inflammation Infl inflammation causes increase in secretion kan inflammation causes uh, secretion inflammation causes secretion inflammation causes swelling inflammation causes redness and so that is the result of inflammation. So ada secretion, dia akan ada banyak secretion. Macam mana kita nak differentiate between crepitations dengan transmitted sound? What are transmitted sound? Transmitted sound apa? Transmitted sound tu maknanya sound yang kita transmitted sound maknanya the sound does not originate inside the lungs. The sound are generated dekat upper airway and is transmitted down. Faham tak? So, dua-dua because of secretion. Transmitted sound because of secretion. Crepitations because of secretion. Cuma crepitations, the, the secretions are in the lungs, in the lower airway. Tapi transmitted sounds are secretion dekat upper airway. So, macam mana nak differentiate? Among them is you ask the patient to cough. <coughs> so, dia batuk. <coughs> So, bila dia batuk, sebab batuk mainly, bila you cough, you do not clearkan secretion dekat lung. Coughing is an act to remove secretion from your upper airway. You gata teka, you cough. So, it uh, removes, moves secretion from your upper airway. So, bila you cough, movement dia akan change, uh, the sound dia akan change, sometimes you akan hilang dah. So, that's how you differentiate whether it is crepitations atau dia transmitted sound. So, crepitations are secretion dalam lower airway because of inflammation. 
Okay. How about percussion? Percussion jadi macam mana? Percussion note. Dal. Dal on percussion. Kenapa dal on percussion? Because uh, the sound secretion. formation to absorb by the secretion. Okay. Macam ni. How I explain is like this. So if you imagine eh, this is your this is a surface. This is a uh, okay. If you imagine this as a jap, let me make it a bit thick. So if you imagine this as a surface, can a piece of paper, contohnya, kan? A piece of paper, and then you introduce a vibration. You introduce a vibration. How you introduce vibration? You introduce by doing percussion. So you create vibration. Can you can you see me that? Can this is a piece of paper? This is a piece of paper. You introduce vibration. You introduce vibration. If you imagine this this book, this is the usual. This uh, uh, best. So lang kita ada macam macam kan? Dia ada structure lain kat bawah dia. So contohnya this is the normal. So this the this this piece this line ni is your. This line ni is your anterior chest wall. Ni, this piece of paper, this is your anterior chest wall. Bawah anterior chest wall tu ada ada lungs. Ada ada your lung. This is the lung. Lung kan dia ada air, dia ada dia ada fluid, dia ada solid dalam dia kan. This is your lung. This is the area. So this is the normal punya percussion note. This is the normal percussion note. Anterior Uh, this surface is the anterior chest wall. Bawah dia is the lung. This is the normal percussion note. Okay, now let's change. Dalam dia ada solid. This is a solid. Dia letak solid kat situ. What will happen? What will happen? Dia akan, this solid ni akan impair kan vibration. Kan? Dia akan create resistance dekat bawah that surface tu. So, That is the, the this surface ni boleh vibrate tak? This surface ni. Can can it still vibrate? Yes, it can. No, Tapi no. dia boleh vibrate. Tapi vibration dia akan impact. Sebab apa? Sebab ada resistance dekat bawah. This still vibrate tapi ada resistance. So this is dull on percussion. Okay. Cuba kalau contohnya, contohnya contohnya kita kita clearkan ni kita letak a different kita letak air so lung tissue ni dah ke bawah dia ada air saja ada space so what will happen bila kita introduce vibration kat sini macam ni piece of paper ni asal dia kan asalnya ada lung parenchyma bawah dia kan ni surface anterior chest wall this is the lung sekarang ni kita create gap ada air in between dia lang kat sini ada ada gap what will happen to the vibration kan this surface ni akan vibrate more ah bila dia vibrate more dia akan jadi hyper resonant bila dia vibrate more dia akan hyper resonant bila kita letak solid dekat bawah dia dia akan jadi dull sebab apa sebab there's reduction There's resistance against dia punya vibration. Okay. Now, now, cuba kita letak fluid pula kat dalam ni. Now, kita letak fluid pula. So, ada fluid kat dalam ni. Kita letak fluid kat sini. Ni lang tisu bawah ni, kita letak fluid kat sini. Apa beza fluid dengan air? Air is com com compressible. Air, dia tak banyak friction. Air does not cause friction. Sebab tu dia boleh resistant. Dia boleh vibrate banyak. That surface ni boleh vibrate banyak. Sebab tak ada resistant. Kan? Solid ada resistant. Lung tissue ada some resistance. Bila air, tak ada resistant. So, dia vibrate banyak. Hyper resonant on percussion. Tapi bila you introduce fluid kat bawah ni. What happen? Fluids ni, dia ada counter pressure. Fluid ni, dia ada counter pressure. Fluid, bila dia kena satu surface, 
dia ada counter pressure the fluids and the surface become almost like a single structure so what happens is instead of kalau macam ini solid ini surface tu kan dia still ada some vibration dal on percussion bila ada fluid because of the counter pressure tu dia almost jadi macam dia most ni yang kita panggil stony dal on percussion if you imagine if you imagine eh stony dal ni macam mana sebab apa stony dal sebab it's almost like you are percussing on a stone sebab apa you percuss straight on the stone sebabnya the fluid tu have counter pressure so fluids and the anterior surface ni dia jadi macam satu structure sebab ada counter pressure dia as opposed dengan just a solid particle so solid particle kat bawah ni ada surface the surface can still vibrate a bit tapi dia the vibration is dulled by the not moving structure dekat bawah which is the solid faham tak faham tak kenapa dia jadi hyper resonant bila ada air kenapa jadi stony dull bila ada fluid kenapa dia jadi dull bila ada solid faham tak ke confuse faham okey so bila percussion dia jadi dull on percussion as compared to stony dull eh? so on percussion dia jadi dull on percussion how about vocal resonant vocal parameters Naik ke apa uh, sama ke affected ke tak? Ha? Increase. Increase. Sebab apa increase? Kenapa increase? Anissa. Soalan. Because because um sound Uh, travel better to solid. Yes. So, Because solid is the best conductor of vibration and sound. So vocal resonant, vocal parameters akan increase. Sebab solid is the best conductor of vibration and sound. You need to remember, vocal resonant, vocal parameters, sound tu created dekat mana? Dekat mana kita create sound tu? Where is the sound generated? Sound tu generated dekat mana? Dekat mana? Dekat vocal cord. Dekat vocal cord. Dekat apa airway. So the sound is generated in your apa airway. Kalau you tengok ni, bronchi breath sound daripada midline pun transmitted ke 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 tempat ada consolidation tu. Obviously bila ada more grumbling sound kan. Na, na, na. Nine, nine, nine. Because you bukan nak sangat nine tu, you nak the vibration yang created by huruf nun tu. Nine, nine. That, that's the vibration that you want. Sebab tu patient menangis pun you can hear. Wah, wah. That is still appreciated as a vocal resonant, vocal parameters. You tak perlu tunggu patient tu sebut nine, nine. Dia menangis pun you can appreciate that is actually uh, uh, vocal resonant, vocal parameters. Kan? So, vocal resonant vocal parameters pun akan increase sebab apa sebab uh, solid is the best conductor of vibration and sound okay alright next let's look at kalau dia jadi apa kalau dia jadi pneumothorax pneumo thorax so pneumothorax maknanya apa ada air eh ya ya sorry Okay, alright. So, pneumothorax ni maknanya ada ada air kan? Okay, what will happen to the trachea? What will happen It to the trachea? Maybe huh? displaced. Trachea displaced. Displaced mana? Away from the... Displaced away. Sebab apa? Sebab air tu, is a, apa the, the plural space is a potential space, dia akan push everything away kan so displace away how about chest expansion how about chest expansion how about chest expansion 
You remember your diaphragm? Kat sini ada, ni diaphragm kan? Ni diaphragm. Dia ada pleural space, kan? Expansion is because of the contraction of the diaphragm. Tapi bila ada air, bila ada air, bila ada air pushing your diaphragm, your lung dah macam tu. Dia ada air space kat sini. So bila your diaphragm contracts, because because of asalnya dia negative pressure, sekarang dah ada positive pressure, asalnya ada vacuum, sekarang dah tak ada vacuum, chest expansion will not be proper sebab dia tak pull dah. Diaphragm contraction tu tak tarik sangat dah. The, the structures dah tak move sangat sebab dia ada air already. Something fill in the space. Kan? So, chest expansion akan reduce on the affected side. Faham tak? How about breast sound? Breast sound? Reduce or absent? Reduce. Kenapa reduce? Because less air masuk dekat affected side tu. Sebabnya several reason. Yang pertama because the lung parenchyma, lung tissues are pushed away. Nombor satu. Lung 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 tissues are pushed away. Nombor satu. Nombor dua is because wait, bila dia push away, what fill that space? That space is filled by air. And you remember, air does not transmit. Air is not a good transmitter of sound and Vibration. So, breast sound akan reduce. How about percussion note? Percussion note? Hyper resonance. Hyper resonance. Sebab dia tak ada friction. Dia akan reduce fri friction. Reduce resistance. Bila reduce resistance, akan more vibration. Bila more vibration, you get hyper resonance on percussion. How about vocal resonance, vocal parameters? Reduce. Kenapa reduce? No conductor. Sebab, no sound conductor. Sebab lung tissues are pushed away and that push away is filled by air and air is not a good conductor of vibration and sound. So, dia akan reduce. Okay. How about kalau dia ada efficient? Efficient. Maknanya dia fluid lah eh. Fluid. Dia efficient, empayima, kan? Okay, what will happen? How about the trachea? What will happen to the trachea? Normal. Huh? Normal. Tak, tak Centrally normal. located. No lah, dia akan away lah. Sebab apa away? Sebab it's, a, it's filling a space. It's filling a potential space. Bila dia fill potential space, dia akan push away but that depends lah sebab fluid ni dia biasa dekat bawah kan bila dekat bawah sometimes trachea dekat atas tapi kalau newborn babies newborn babies dia baring kan so dia akan push all the lungs away so trachea generally akan push away sebab it's a space occupying punya type of lesion dia akan occupy a potential space that potential space is your pleural space so trachea boleh push away how about chest expansion Reduce chest expansion. Apa reduce? Sama macam uh, ni tadi lah. Uh, uh, sebab it's a potential space. Daripada negative pressure, daripada vacuum kan. Bila vacuum, you tarik, dia ikut lah. Bila ada vacuum kan, you tarik, dia ikut. Sekarang ni dah tak ada vacuum tu, you tarik, dia tak ikut lah. Dia tak pergi lah. Faham tak? Bila dia tak, dia tak ikut, your lung will not expand as properly lah. Sebab it's just your lung akan expand bila the, the chest follows what the diaphragm is doing. Tapi sekarang ni, in between diaphragm and the chest, dia ada space. That space tu pula, space yang fluid, air, dia tak ikut. So, chest expansion akan reduce. How about your breast sounds? Breast sounds? Breast sounds? Breast sounds? Reduce. Reduce? Sebab apa reduce? Because of the fluid. Because the lung tissues are pushed away by the fluid. And fluid is the worst conductor of vibration and sound. So breath sound akan reduce. 
kan sebab lung tissues are push away sepatutnya bila you scatter anterior chest wall terus lung tissue sekarang ni between your lung tissue between your uh, anterior chest wall dengan lung tissue tu dah ada space dah ada space and that space is now filled by fluid and fluid is not a good conductor of vibration and sound so breath sound akan reduce percussion percussion stony dal stony dal sebab apa stony dal because of the counter pressure daripada fluid itu so counter pressure creates like a same dia jadi same structure dah between the anterior wall tu dengan dia punya bawah tu it becomes a same size because of the counter pressure from the fluid how about vocal resonance and vocal fremitus reduce reduce sebab apa reduce fluid is not a good conductor sebab lung tissues are pushed away and is filled by fluid and fluid is the is not a good conductor of vibration and sound. Okay, clear? Faham? Okay, if you understand the the basics behind it, you understand kenapa ada finding-finding macam ni. Okay, let's look at another thing. What's the difference between ronkai and wheezing? Apa beza? Stridor versus Rongkai versus Wiz. Rongkai dengan Wiz ni apa beza dia? Benda yang sama. It's the same thing. Cuma dekat Malaysia kita differentiate. Kita kata Rongkai ni is what we can hear by our naked ear. Wizzing is what we can auscultate. Bila, uh, 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 no, kembali. Wizzing is what we can hear by our ear. Rongkai is what we can auscultate, kan? But it's actually the same thing lah. Rongkai and wheezing is the same thing. How about stridor? What is stridor? Mm. Obstruction from the upper airway. So stridor is a harsh type of sound. It's a harsh type of sound. Bila harsh, maknanya low pitch. Low pitch, low frequency. Wheezing is a high frequency. And stridor, wheezing. Kan? It's just about the frequency. Low frequency, jadi stridor. High frequency, jadi wheezing. Apa yang affect dia punya frequency ni? Caliber of the lumen. Large caliber, jadi low frequency. Small caliber, dia jadi high frequency. Sebab apa jadi high frequency? Sebab the same volume nak pass through. The same flow rate. Berapa liters per minit. Sama. Kan? So dia nak pass through same amount. Sebab itu dia terpaksa naikkan. Kan? Contohnya macam uh, kaliber besar. Lepas tu kecil. Kaliber besar. Lepas tu kecil. Kan? So yang ni frekuensi dia slow. Lepas tu sampai sini dia terus jadi laju. Kan? So apa jadi? So stridor wheezing stridor wheezing faham okey alright so kita understand that uh, okey alright okey stridor let, let, let's look at let's look at something okey stridor stridor ni apa airway ke low airway apa okey you need to remember saya dah sebut tadi Uh, all these sounds are because of obstruction. If you imagine, ini lumen, you introduce an obstruction. Flow dia macam ni. Asalnya straight je. Sekarang because of this obstruction ni, dia start create turbulent flow. Kan? Dia start create turbulent flow because of obstruction. Okay. It create turbulent flow. This turbulent flow yang jadi stridor, this turbulent flow yang jadi rongkai or whisk based on the caliber of the lumen. Faham tak? But all, all these things is because of obstruction. Okay. Stridor ni inspiratory ke expiratory? Stridor inspiratory. Stridor inspiratory. Kenapa stridor inspiratory? Sebab obstruction dekat apa airway. So bila uh, 
pass the air pass so ah so, uh, the the air uh, turbulence flow tu after the obstruction so then they could the uh, the low low part lah yeah okay sebab so, if you look at if you look at kita punya airway kan kan daripada tekak kan sampai ke bawah sini kalau you introduce obstruction dekat sini contohnya dekat sini kan itu obstruction dekat sini so dia punya dia pada lumen yang besar ke lumen yang kecil and it's a long pathway kita oscillate pun dekat sini kan so it's a long pathway and you remember inspiration is an active process we are sucking air inside our our chest kita sedut air is active active suctioning of air from environment into our lungs you are actively sucking so bila you actively sucking bila ada obstruction you akan create turbulent flow this turbulent flow dalam kaliber besar low frequency dia akan jadi stridor so bunyi dia masa inspiration How about muscle expression? Kenapa muscle, muscle expression boleh dengar stridor tak? So generally kita tak dengar. Sebab apa? Sebab expiration is a passive process. Bila passive process, suka dia lah nak berapa laju. Kan? Bila dia slow keluar, turbulent flow tak banyak created. Lepas tu pula, you remember, dia punya caliber dia daripada kecil ke caliber besar. So bila dia caliber besar, turbulent flow dia tak banyak sangat yang created yang cause problem. And it opens up into the environment. Bila dia opens up into the environment, bunyi itu kalau turbulent flow created dekat environment, kita tak dengar lah. Sebab turbulent flow, bunyi itu created dekat dalam. kan? So it created dekat luar. So kita tak dengar expiratory. Boleh tak dengar expiratory stridor? Boleh tak jadi biphasic stridor? Maksudnya stridor tu ada masa inspiratory dan masa expiratory. Boleh ke tak boleh? Boleh. Masa bila boleh? Obstructive airway. Bila uh, semua obstructive airway disease. Uh, any any obstructive uh, obstructive airway disease is stridor biasa pun is obstructive airway disease. You dapat biphasic stridor bila dua keadaan. Satunya bila the obstruction is lower down. Lower down dekat bawah-bawah sini obstruction dia. So, masa kat bawah you dapat stridor, masa kat luar pun dia ada banyak parts of trachea lagi yang bunyi contohnya. So, contohnya macam foreign body aspiration. Then you can get biphasic stridor. Bila dia, obstruction is lower down ke apa airway itu. Ataupun bila obstruction is severe. Obstruction dia severe sangat walaupun dekat hidung pun, kan? Hidung pun, tapi kalau obstruction dia severe, It can cause biphasic type of stridor. It can cause biphasic type of stridor. So, bila obstruction is severe, you get biphasic sounds. Okay. Alright. So, faham eh? So, stridor, inspiration, sebab inspiration is an active process. You are sucking air in through a obstructed lumen. So, that's why you get inspiration. Expiration is a passive process. So, passive process ni kalau ada obstruction pun, it can take time to actually clear. Dia nak keluar tu, dia suka hati dia lah nak keluar berapa lama kan. So, doesn't create much. Contohnya macam you nak tiup lah. Whistle kan, whistle. You tiup whistle. Cuba you tiup slow-slow je. Hmm, ada bunyi tak? Tak ada bunyi lah sebab slow. Bila slow, tak adalah turbulent flow created. Bila you tiup laju, bunyi kuat. Sebab apa? Sebab turbulent flow created tu banyak. So, sama juga inspiration is a Active process, you are sucking air in. Bila ada, tebu, bila ada obstruction, more turbulent flow created. Kenapa jadi stridor, kenapa tak jadi whiz? Sebab caliber of the lumen. So caliber of the lumen menyebabkan the frequency is lower, low frequency. Low frequency is a harsh type of sound. Okay, now kita go kepada lower airway obstruction. Kenapa lower, lower airway obstruction jadi rongkai, jadi whizzing? Kenapa tak jadi stridor? Sebab apa? Sebab apa? Sebab obstruction dia. Sebab caliber of the lumen. You need to remember. Stridor, wheezing sama. Caliber besar jadi stridor. Caliber kecil jadi wheezing. It's just about the caliber. Caliber besar jadi low frequency jadi stridor. Caliber kecil, high frequency jadi wheezing. So, 
low airway dia jadi wheezing sebab low smaller caliber besar kecil besar kecil sini low frequency stridor high frequency high frequency jadi wheezing that's the reason nombor satu. Okay. kenapa so wheezing pula inspiratory ke expiratory Inspiratory ke expiratory? Expiratory. 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 Kenapa expiratory? Kenapa masa inspiration kita tak dengar wheezing? Sebab if you remember kan, obstruction dekat wheezing ni, dia dekat ujung-ujung sini, it's a bronchial punya obstruction. It's a bronchial obstruction. Kan? Obstruction dekat lower airway. Lower airway obstruction dekat small-small caliber lumen kan. So bila dah obstruction kat sini, you remember inspiration, inspiration is an active process. Dia ada expansion of the chest. You create a negative pressure. Kalau airway macam ni, kan, you are creating a negative pressure, kan? Creating a negative pressure. You are creating a negative pressure. Bila negative pressure, there are some element of airway tu boleh buka sikit. Faham tak? Because you are creating negative pressure. Nombor satu. Nombor dua, kalau obstruction dekat sini contohnya, kan? Terbelum flu created, tapi dia dah sikit je. Tak banyak dia pergi. Perjalanan dia tak jauh. So, bila perjalanan dia tak jauh, tak banyaklah uh, bunyi yang created sebab perjalanannya dekat. Uh, uh, Aradon Koriban. Uh, so, perjalanan yang dekat. Uh, bila perjalanan tu dekat, bunyi tu tak banyak. Orang tak bisik, orang tak gege sangat. Kan? Bunyi tu tak, 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 tak bisik. Ha. Sebab perjalanan dia dekat okay. Tapi what happens bila You expire So again expiration Is a passive process So whatever air Yang masuk sini dia kena keluar So walaupun dia passive process There is still an obstruction Dan obstruction tu lower down Daripada lower down ni Punyalah jauh perjalanan dia kan? So bila jauh perjalanan dia kan dia akan create banyak turbulent flow throughout the airway. So that is why you can hear expiratory punya sound sebab perjalanan dia jauh. Perjalanan dia jauh. Dan because caliber lumen dia kecil, you get wheezing rather than stridor. Eh. Dan apa lagi? Dan uh, apa nama uh, uh, apa jadi lagi? Walaupun dia passive process, expression is a passive process, tapi sebab ada obstruction there will be prolonged expiratory phase. Dia passive. Tak ada you tak ada effort pun untuk push air out. Tapi you ada obstruction. So bila ada obstruction, apa? Dia akan jadi prolonged expiratory phase. Prolonged expiratory phase. Ini reflected by your increase in your FEV1. Sebab itu you akan nampak FVC over FEV1 eh, uh, FEV1, FEV1 over FVC So, so FEV1 you akan Akan increase FU, FEV1 akan Akan increase ha. So ada prolonged expiratory phase So these are the findings yang you akan dapat So bila ada lower airway obstruction You dapat expiratory type of sound And that sound is wrong kind or wish Because small caliber dia ada prolonged expiratory phase. Kalau you buat lung function test, you akan nampak increase in FEV1. Ha? Increase in FEV1. Dia FEV1 over FVC kan? So FEV1 over FVC. You akan nampak dia akan naik. So this is lower airway obstruction. Boleh dapat biphasic rongkai tak? Boleh tak dapat biphasic wheeze? Boleh dapat ke tak dapat? Boleh. Macam mana boleh? Apa keadaan yang membolehkan jadi biphasic wheeze? Obstruction dia atas-atas sikit ke? Dada? Obstruction dia atas-atas sikit. Kan? Contohnya macam apa? Contohnya macam foreign body expiration. Foreign body expiration. So you akan dapat biphasic punya rongkai. Ataupun obstruction is severe sampai dekat 
almost dekat main bronchus obstruction severe asthma for example kan obstruction is severe so you get biphasic type of wheeze okay clear pam okay clear okay okay larat lagi let's go through Okay, respi clear, respi clear. Tu je lah eh, nak, nak remind. Yang pentingnya you understand pasal uh, difference between air, solid and consolidation. Solid, solid, air and fluid. You understand difference dia. Kenapa jadi dull, kenapa jadi hyper resonant, vocal resonant, breath sound dia macam mana. You understand that, that basic. Okay, let's go through some cardiac, cardiac problem. Okay. So if you imagine, eh, so uh, I'm not a very good drawer my drawing is very bad uh, i don't really care so if you imagine this is your heart you have your right atrium here uh, right ventric uh, sorry sorry uh, left atrium right ventricle left ventricle here you have your lung here uh, the whole thing heart ni dekat dalam sini lah eh. and if you imagine ni for easy drawing eh ni badan kita kan everything is here So, heart dalam sini, everything here dekat sini. Okay. Kalau kita draw kita punya blood vessel. Eh. Okay. So, blood, deoxygenated blood from our body. Dia masuk through your, apa? Ini IVC and also SVC. Superior vena cava dengan inferior vena cava masuk dalam right atrium. Dia ada valve dekat sini. Dia ada right ventricle, dia akan masuk ke apa ni what, what what is this what is this structure pulmonary circulation lah ni apa ni what is this daripada right ventricle kepada lungs apa ni apa vessel ni pulmonary artery ye so you, you, you senang macam ni je whatever goes out from the heart is artery whatever goes into the heart is a vein masuk heart jadi vein masuk keluar heart jadi artery so this is pulmonary artery Pemenang atri satu, dia ada dua branch kan? Okay. Daripada your lung pula, dia ada empat. Dia ada empat. Masuk dalam left atrium. Apa ni? Pemenang vein. Pemenang vein. Sebab apa? Sebab whatever goes into the heart, dia adalah vein. Whatever goes away from the heart is atri. Okay. Daripada left atrium, eh, kat sini ada valve eh. Kat sini ada valve. Which is your pemenang valve. Kat sini ada valve satu. Daripada left ventricle, apa ni? Aorta. Aorta. So this is your major artery lah. So AO, aorta. Okay. What causes first and second heart sound? First heart sound is caused by S1. S1 is? S1 apa? What causes S1? Mitral valve closure. Closure, closure of your atrial ventricular valve. Sorry, I need to respond to my emoji. Ya, yeah, so saya nak tulis pada memo jap. Okay, so it's close close ah uh, closure of your valve, uh, mitral valve dengan this valve, eh? So atrial ventricular valve. So this valve, S1 dengan S2 is caused by closure of your uh, pulmonary valve dengan Closure of pulmonary valve dengan aortic valve. Aortic valve. Aortic valve. Okay. Um, okay, let's see this. Yeah, I give you an example. Okay, kita give macam ni dulu. Um, what is pulse? Pulse ni apa? Bila kita rasa pulse ni, kenapa kita rasa pulse dekat radial? Kat mana kita rasa pas? Kita rasa pas kat radius, kita rasa pas dekat alna, tapi mainly dekat radius lah. Kita boleh rasa pas juga dekat brachial. Kita boleh rasa pas dekat uh, apa nama carotid. Kita boleh rasa pas dekat femoral. Kenapa those are the place yang kita rasa? Kenapa kita palpit dekat sini? Kenapa kita tak palpit dekat tengah-tengah lagi? Tengah-tengah ni tak ada in midway in your forearm ni tak ada artery ke? Kenapa kita tak palpit kat tengah-tengah ni? Ada tapi yang tu more superficial. Are you sure? Prominence. Yes, because of bony prominence. 
Sebab human being ni, manusia kan, kita appreciate gradient. Kita appreciate gradient. Kalau dua structure, dua structure sebelah-sebelah. Sama color. Senang tak kita nampak. Difficult. Sebab tak ada gradient. Tapi bila ada color gradient, kita boleh appreciate. Because human being, kita appreciate gradient. Kita appreciate gradient. So sama juga dengan pulse. Kita rasa kat sini sebab belakang dia ada bone. Bila belakang dia ada bone, kita boleh appreciate dia punya pressure gradient. Kenapa kita boleh rasa pulse? Sebab this is your vessel masa diastolic and this is your vessel masa systolic. Kan? Masa systolic dia besar, masa diastolic dia kecil. Systolic, diastolic, systolic, diastolic. Kan? This is the vessel. Kan? Ni Masa ni pressure dia 120. Pressure masa sini 80 contohnya. So, this is the pressure gradient that you can feel. This is the pressure gradient. Kan? Kita boleh rasa pal sebab ada pressure gradient ni. Okay. In a way, okay, apa, this, this are all blood pressure, kan, BP. What what affects blood pressure? BP is, what's the formula? Cardiac output times? Heart rate. Just bad for resisting. TPR. Cardiac output times TPR. Cardiac output equals? Stroke volume dan heart rate. Stroke volume times heart rate. Okay. So, these are all the factors that affects your blood pressure. So, this 120, 80 ni is affected by all these parameter. Okay. I give you one example. Contohnya, in early part of shock. Early part of shock apa jadi? Heart rate naik. Heart rate naik. Betul? Kan? Heart rate naik. So, bila heart rate naik, apa jadi? Cardiac output increase. Cardiac output akan akan increase. Kan? Cardiac output akan increase. So, untuk maintain dia punya pulse. Sebab tu kadang kita boleh rasa pulse volume dia still okay. Okay, what happens next? What happens next? Stroke volume akan start reduce. Kan? Stroke volume akan reduce sebab sepsis dan sebagainya. Kan? Kan? Uh, Stroke volume affected by your preload kan? Preload akan affect stroke volume. Kenapa preload affect stroke volume? Preload, you remember the Stalling law. What is what the Stalling law say? Stalling law. The more volume, the more the end diastolic volume. Apa uh, venous return? fill up your end diastolic fill up fill up your uh, ventricle kan the higher the end diastolic volume the stronger the cardiac contraction faham tak so the more end diastolic volume increases the stroke volume inotropic effect dia is increase your heart will pump harder bila banyak less stroke volume reduce preload eh? reduce preload less stroke volume your heart will pump less Kan? So, bila your heart pumps less, what happens? Your BP akan akan drop. So, in a way, bila ada benda yang causes wide pass pressure. Contohnya kan, heart rate systolic 120, diastolic turun jadi 40 contohnya. What happens to the pulse volume dia? You akan rasa pulse volume dia. So, normal macam ni, sekarang ni dia turun ke bawah. Dia turun ke bawah, ni 40 je. Kan, so jauh. Bila jauh, you akan feel bounding pulse. Kan, sebab ni kan dia kena macam ni, mula-mula. Macam ni kan, pulse kan, kita boleh rasa kan. Sekarang ni jauh, bounding. Bila dia jauh, you rasa dia bounding, dia akan kuat. Tapi cuba kalau, cuba kalau uh, condition yang systolic BP turun. Systolic BP jadi 100 contohnya. Diastolic maintain 80. Dia dekat. Bila dia dekat apa jadi? Dia jadi thready pulse. Dia jadi thready pulse. Sebab apa? Sebab dia dekat je. Walaupun dia nampak diastolic BP dia maintain. So, what affects pulse is actually the pressure gradient. Berapa different between systolic dengan diastolic. 
Okay. Let's see how how it actually affects uh, our our clinical uh, punya ni eh. <coughs> okay. I give you okay, let's see pada VSB. Okay, contohnya you ada hole dekat sini. Ada lubang kat sini. Okay. Kita tengok. Let's okay, mai saya I give you one this is a ballpark punya number lah eh sebab dia akan different dia akan different based on the based on the saya kita letak adapt ni lah sebab kalau children dia punya pressure dia differ according to uh, age according to body size BMI apa semua. So kita tengok adapt adapt dia quite standard. So what's the aortic pressure? Systolic 100 to 120 adapt systolic. This is a pulse pressure lah. How about diastolic? 60 to 80. Kan? This is normal pressure lah. Kan? Pressure dekat your aorta. Kan? Aortic pressure. This is a ballpark number eh. Semua-semua ni uh, numbers yang saya akan tunjuk lepas ni semua nombor-nombor yang is a ballpark number. It's not uh, maknanya dia generally lebih kurang macam tu lah. Okay. How about your left ventricle punya pressure? Systolic apa systolic? Jangan yeah, sorry. Jangan yeah, sorry. Okay. So systolic lebih kurang sama lah. So seratus tu hundred twenty. Sebab dia dari sini, dia pump dari sini kan. So, lebih kurang 100 to 120. Okay. How about diastolic? Diastolic pressure. Sama tak? Diastolic pressure. Kenapa tak sama? Kalau sama macam mana nak? Ada ventricular filling kan? So, pressure dia ballpark lebih kurang 5 to uh, 30 lah. 5 to 30 lebih kurang. Okay. How about PA? PA pressure. PA pressure. PA pressure systolic lebih kurang 60 to 80. Ni ballpark number lah eh. Lebih kurang ni number. So 60 to 80 PA pressure. Diastolic. Diastolic. Diastolic lebih kurang 20 to 30. How about right ventricular pressure? Systolic. 60 to 80. How about uh, systolic. How about diastolic? 5 to 30. Lebih kurang. Okay. So, now, let's see. Let's see bila ada hole dekat sini. Dia ada lubang dekat sini. So, what happens? Again, move, fluid moves from high pressure to low pressure. Fluid moves from high pressure to low pressure. So, bila ada lubang dekat sini, what happens? Ada flow tak? Ada flow tak? Masa bila ada flow? Masa systolic ada flow tak? Ni 100, 120. Ini 60 to 80, systolic. Ada flow tak? Ada flow ada. lah. Ada. So ada left to right shunt. Ada left to right shunt. Kan? Masa diastolic ada flow tak? Masa diastolic? Tak ada. Tak ada. Sebab pressure dia lebih kurang sama. Pressure dia lebih kurang sama. So, VSD, murmur dia adalah systolic type of murmur. Okay. Next. Again. What causes sound? Closure. First heart sound is caused by closure of your mitral valve. Mitral dengan bicuspid valve. Kan? Closure of your uh, uh, mitral and tricuspid valve. Uh, second heart sound is caused by closure of your aortic and pulmonary valve. Okay. Apa yang menyebabkan dia tutup? Valve ni, apa yang menyebabkan dia tutup? Bila your heart contract, kan? Bila bila heart, bila... bila con, uh, con, okay. Kan? Bila heart contract, kan? Dia push fluid kan so tutup lah kan the move the contraction of the heart fluid push 
So, dia tutup your valve. Jadi, one way. Okay. Bila dia tutup, bila dia pergi sini kan? Dia tutup valve. Dia pergi sini saja ke? Dia akan pergi sini juga. Kan? So, movement of fluid across the shunt, movement of fluid across the lesion occurs serentak dengan closure of the closure of the even actually a bit earlier daripada closure of the mitral valve so that is why you cannot hear the first heart sound sebab sound itu dah campur sekali so uh, turbulent flow created turbulent flow created bila fluid keluar ni dia akan create turbulent flow kan dia akan create turbulent flow kan so the moment bila heart contract dia dia gerak sini, dia gerak sini, dia gerak sini, dia create turbulent flow kat sini dan dia close. So, dia obscure the first heart sound. Can you hear the second heart sound? Second heart sound pun tak berapa dengar. Sebab apa? Sebab, uh, apa nama, closure of the... Allah, sorry. Okay. Sebab uh, second heart sound is caused by closure of the aortic, uh, aortic and pulmonary valve. Kan? Movement of fluid ni across the shunt ni, bila dia stop? Dia stop bila heart dah stop contracting dengan closure of opening of this valve and closure of this valve. Baru dia tak ada flow dah. So, benda ni berlaku serentak. Bila berlaku serentak, you don't hear the, the second heart sound pun is obscured. Sebab itu, in VSD, you get a pan systolic murmur. And you cannot hear first and second heart sound. You tak dengar first and second heart sound. So, VSD is a pan systolic murmur sebab movement of blood across the left to right shunt tu occurs throughout the systolic phase. Bila dia tak ada bila dia tak ada movement, bila masuk diastolic. Ah so both first and second sound is obscure. Okey. Tu nombor satu. Faham itu eh? Okey, bila lubang dia kecil. What happen? Bila lubang kecil, turbulent flow dia macam ada dua chamber, lubang dia kecil. Turbulent flow dia makin banyak ke makin sikit? Makin banyak. Turbulent flow dia makin banyak sebab pressure dia sama. You nak push dia sama. You nak push sama, lubang kecil, turbulent flow akan lagi banyak. So, bila bila turbulent flow lagi banyak, amplitude dia tinggi, bunyi dia akan louder. So, louder sound bila lubang dia kecil. Bila lubang dia besar, lubang dia besar, dia banyak space. Turbulent flow kereta dekat tepi-tepi ni. Tengah-tengah ni tak ada turbulent flow. Sebab itu sound dia akan softer. So, the larger the lumen, the larger the lesion, the softer the sound. This because the softer the turbulence flow. Faham tak? Faham tak? Faham eh? Okay. That's number dua. Number tiga. Number tiga. Uh, sound dia dekat mana? Where can you hear the sound? Sound dia dekat mana? Dekat defect tu. Dekat structure defect ni. Sound dia bila you oscatate, you dengar dekat lower left sternal edge. You remember eh? Oh, macam nak draw. Okay, let me try and draw eh. Okay. Okay, contohnya eh. Allah. If I can draw, this is your neck, this is your, uh, I am a very bad at drawing. Uh, okay, uh, macam itulah siapa yang pandai draw, nanti draw lah dulu sikit. Okay, so contohnya, this is your, this is your, this is your chest kan, this is your chest. Okay, your heart, dia macam ni. Kan, macam tu lebih kurang kan. So, this is your LV, this is your RV. RV kat sini. RV LV. Kan? So this is your sternum. Sternum kat sini. Sternum sampai sini. Tengah-tengah ni. So bila RV dekat sini, 
fluid kan dia move daripada left ke right. Fluid dia macam ni, bergerak pergerakan dia. So that is why you can hear the sound at your lower left sternal edge. Lower left sternal edge. Mitral valve. Sound dia dekat sini kan? You can hear dekat apex punya area. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, can you auscultate kat mana? Apex, lower left sternal edge, upper left sternal edge kan? Okay, macam ni. Whatever lower down is always pan-systolic. You auscultate, whatever lower down is always pan-systolic. Whatever dekat atas, upper left sternal edge, upper right sternal edge, is always ejection systolic. It should never be pan systolic dekat atas. Bawah is always pan systolic. Okay. Faham eh? Okay. Let's see what what is the effect of VSD pada your blood pressure. Okay, let me erase this. Effect of VSD to your blood pressure. BP. Okay, normal 100 to 120. 60 to 80. Okay. Sekarang, ada VSD. What happens to your systolic blood pressure? Cuba fikir tengok. Systolic BP. Fluid sepatutnya pergi ke aorta. Tapi sekarang ni, instead of pergi aorta, sebahagian daripada dia, daripada left ventricle, sebahagian pergi aorta, sebahagian lagi cross into the right ventricle. So, what will happen to your systolic blood pressure? What will happen? Reduce. Okay, theoretically, dia akan reduce. Theoretically, dia akan reduce. Tapi, what can the body do? few things. Yang pertama, hmm. bila body nampak alamak, sekarang ni blood dah kurang. Sepatutnya blood semua pergi dekat aorta. Sekarang sebahagian hmm. daripada blood dah pergi kepada right ventricle. What will the body do? What will the... the contraction. Yes, dia akan bekerja keras. Kan? Selalu dia pump macam tu je. Sekarang ni dia kena bekerja keras. Dia kena pump harder. Sebab apa dia kena pump harder? Sebab body detect kan? Your aortic body, karotic body apa semua, dia detect oh. We are getting less blood ni. Kan? So, kita kena pump harder. So, dia akan increasekan the stroke volume untuk maintain the blood pressure. Lagi problem, dia akan naikkan dia punya heart rate. Sebab itu, tachycardia is among the complication. Among signs of a problem kan is tachycardia. Sebab apa? Nak maintain blood pressure. So, nak maintain 100-120, dia akan increasekan heart rate. Dia akan increasekan stroke volume. So what happens to the cardiac muscle bila dia bekerja keras? What happens? What happens to your muscle? Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. Muscle kita bila bekerja keras, dia akan hypertroph lah. Ha, dia akan bekerja keras. Bila dia bekerja keras, dia jadi hypertroph. Dia jadi hypertroph. So, bila dia hypertroph, so BP boleh maintain. Kan? Dan... Bila dia hypertrophic, what will happen to your left ventricle ni? Left ventricle jadi besar kan? Left ventricle jadi besar. Bila dia jadi besar, dia jadi ke tepi kan? Sebab tu jadi cardiomegaly. Sebab left ventricle tempatnya di sini, dia akan jadi besar. You buat x-ray, you buat you buat x-ray, you nampak cardiomegaly. Okay. What happens to your diastolic blood pressure? Affected tak diastolic blood pressure? Yes. Macam mana? Macam mana efektif tak? Sebab kita punya ruang untuk uh, feeling of the blood tu dah makin kurang. Actually, diastolic blood pressure tak affected sangat. Unless kau teruk lah. Generally, diastolic blood pressure tak main, tak tak affected sangat. So, actually BP in S, in S, uh, uh, apa, BSD ni, dia lebih kurang sama. Kan? Tak affected sangat. Okay. Tapi, you see here. Fluids. Left ventricle, pump kepada AO. Sekarang ni dia pump ke right ventricle juga. So what happens to your right ventricle? Sebelum ni, right, sebelum ni right ventricular feeling daripada uh, daripada RA saja. Sekarang dia dapat daripada both. Bila dia dapat 
whatever increases the end dystonic volume akan increasekan inotropic effect dia. So dia akan pump harder. Dia akan pump harder. Semua fluid ni pergi mana? Semua fluid ni pergi ke lungs. Lungs sebelum ni dapat fluid daripada right ventricle sahaja. Sekarang, sekarang ni lungs dapat fluid daripada both right ventricle and some daripada left ventricle. So what happens to the lungs? Lungs akan Tentang jadi hypertension. Lungs akan jadi fluid overloaded sebelum pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary dah teruk lah. Tapi what happens mula-mula adalah fluid overload. Fluid overloads in the lung. Bila fluid overload dekat lung, apa you boleh nampak dekat chest x-ray? Pulmonary edema. Sebelum tu lagi. Sebelum tu lagi adalah these are the signs of cardiac failure. You akan nampak apa? You akan nampak bad wing signs. Ni semua signs of hyperemic lungs. Hyperemic lung. Uh, spelling pun memang teruk lah eh. So hyperemic lung maknanya fluid banyak dekat lung. So you, you akan nampak curly B lines, fluid in the fissure, upper lobe diversion, bad wing signs. Kan? Increase vascular markings. So semua ni are signs of fluid overload in the lungs. Okay, so BSD, you buat x-ray, you akan nampak cardiomegaly sebab left ventricle hypertrophy. Kan? Dan you akan nampak all the signs of fluid overload which is hyperemic lung field. You akan nampak uh, apa uh, uh, increased vascular marking, you akan nampak uh, bad wing signs, upper lobe diversion, curly B lines. Eh? So, uh, fluid in the fissure. Semua ni signs of fluid. Banyak dekat your lungs. Okay. Faham tak setakat ni? Okay. Eh? Okay. Let's look at another lesion. Okay. Let's look at another lesion. Okay. Kita nak. Let's look at another lesion. Okay. Let's see if I can delete this. Okay. Okay. Uh, cuba kalau kita create lubang dekat tempat lain pula. Contohnya dia ada lubang dekat sini. Dia ada shunt in between the PA dengan aorta. What is this? Okay, look sikit. Eh. Dia ada ada satu vessel connecting this, this. Between PA and aorta. Apa ni? What we call this? Pattern ductus arteriosus. Pattern ductus arteriosus. Okay. Apa jadi? Ada shunt tak? Ada. Ada shunt tak? Sis tolik. Ada shunt. Sis tolik kan? Sebab ni 100-120, ni 60-80. Ada shunt. Sis tolik. Dias tolik ada shunt tak? Dias tolik? Ada. Ada. So, sis tolik ada shunt. Diastolic pun ada shunt because ada pressure gradient. Diastolic pun ada shunt, ada sebab ada pressure gradient. Ada break tak? Ada tak masa? Ada tak masa yang mana pressure dia lebih kurang sama so tak ada shunt? Ada tak? Tak ada kan? Throughout both throughout both phase, systolic, diastolic, masa valve tengah nak close ke, masa valve lepas close ke, there is always shunt. There is always pressure gradient between the aorta and also the pulmonary artery. So shunt tu akan continuous. Bila shunt tu continuous, then dia left to right shunt. Kan? Left to right shunt. Bila shunt dia continuous, murmur dia pun continuous. Sebab tu you dapat continuous type of murmur. Kan? Continuous murmur. Masa systolic ada ada gradient, masa diastolic pun ada ada gradient. Okey. Mama dia sama tak? Masa systolic dengan masa diastolic. You tengok pressure gradient dia. So pressure gradient dia pressure dia is higher masa systolic as compared dengan pressure masa masa diastolic. So bila higher pressure, velocity amplitude is higher as compared dengan lower pressure. You tube whistle, you tube quad dengan you tube koho-koho ada beza tak loudness dia? Loudness dia ada beza. Sebab high pressure, low pressure. Kan? So, what happens is, dia punya shunt dia 
Turbulent flow is more masa systolic as compared dengan masa diastolic. Sebab itu murmur dia bukan bunyi zzzz, macam tu je. Murmur dia zzzz, 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 zzzz. Sebab apa? Sebab move, beza masa systolic dengan diastolic. So this is what causes the continuous machinery murmur. Sebab machines does not bunyi zzzz, macam tu je. Dia ada gradient, ada beza dia. That's why you get So that's why you get continuous machinery murmur. Okay. Faham? Nampak? Okay. Let's look at dia punya BP. What happen dengan BP dia? Masa systolic. Apa jadi pada BP dia? Reduce ke tak reduce? Systolic. Zakuan, mana Zakuan? Uh, re ha? uh, reduce. Reduce. Kenapa reduce? The pressure, ah, uh, the blood shift from the aorta to the pulmonary artery. Okay. A so, uh. alright. So theoretically, blood kan daripada left ventricle pergi aorta. Sekarang ni sebahagian daripada dia pergi ke PA, kan? So theoretically, blood pressure dia reduce. Tapi, you remember, our body is sangat-sangat menjaga, is very protective of our systolic blood pressure. Our body is very protective of our systolic blood pressure. Sebab systolic blood pressure is the supply of blood to our whole body. Depends on the systolic blood pressure. So, our body akan preserve kita punya systolic blood pressure. So, what will the body do? First, dia akan increasekan heart rate. Dia akan increasekan heart rate. Sebab itu one of the symptoms of cardiac uh, of PDA in children especially is tachycardia, kan? Tachycardia. Well, bila you increasekan heart rate, kan? Cardiorespiratory support, you punya uh, respiratory center pun akan ni kan, so akan tachycardia juga. So you increasekan heart rate untuk maintain blood pressure. You punya left ventricle, left ventricle kata, oh, alamak, sekarang ni I'm I'm Pumping blood, bukan setakat to AO, I'm pumping to the PA as well. So, I need to work harder. So, dia increasekan stroke volume. So, left ventricle akan bekerja keras. You increasekan stroke volume. Increase heart rate, increase stroke volume untuk maintain cardiac output. Kan? So, blood pressure, systolic BP will be maintained. Bila left ventricle kerja keras, left ventricle akan hypertrophy. Sebab tu dia akan jadi cardiomegaly juga. Ha? Cardio Magali sebab left ventricle hypertrophy. Okay. What will happen to the uh, lungs? Lungs pula dapat both fluid kan? Daripada aorta dapat fluid daripada right ventricle. So apa jadi? Lungs pun akan fluid overloaded. Bila fluid overload, you akan nampak bad wing signs, curly B lines, increased vascular marking, uh, fluid in the fissure. Kan? So fluid in the fissure, cardio Magali. Kadang megali sebab left ventricular hypertrophy sebab increase stroke volume dekat left ventricle. Okay, what will happen? Okay, so systolic BP maintain. What will happen to your diastolic blood pressure? What will happen to your diastolic blood pressure? Atira, diastolic BP, what happen? Tengok ni, tengok ni, tengok chat ni. So I said tadi, ada shun, kan Zakuan sebut betul tadi, teori theoretically BP akan kurang tapi sebab all the corrective measures yang uh, body buat, naikkan heart rate, naikkan stroke volume, so systolic BP maintain. Masa diastolic, ada shun juga. Bila ada shun, diastolic BP akan turun. Betul tak? Shun, shun, shunting causes reduce in blood pressure kan? Systolic, body buat corrective measures, naikkan heart rate, naikkan stroke volume. Naikkan, naikkan resistant, vessel constriction untuk maintain systolic blood pressure. Diastolic blood pressure, body boleh buat apa-apa tak? So tak banyak body boleh buat. Our body, tak banyak benda dia boleh buat untuk maintain diastolic BP. So what happens is, diastolic BP akan 
reduce. So systolic BP maintain 120. Diastolic, apa, diastolic BP akan reduce. 30, 40. Kan? So what happens pada your pulse? Bounding pulse. Pulse jadi bounding pulse. Sebab apa bounding pulse? Sebab systolic BP maintain. Diastolic BP akan drop. So bila diastolic BP drop, you akan dapat bounding pulse. Okay. Lepas tu, sekarang ni, you ingat, lepas your aorta ni, lepas pada PDA, kan ada your brachiocephalic uh, artery lah apa semua kan. Sekarang you angkat pula tangan tu, tinggi. You angkat tangan tinggi. What happens? You angkat your upper limb against gravity. What happens? Collapsing pulse. Dia akan jadi more shunting. Bila more shunting, that's why you get collapsing pulse. Okay. Faham? Clear? Nampak? Okay. Next. Let's look at another lesion. Okay. Kita pergi tengok uh, lesion dekat VOF pula. Okay. Lesion dekat VOF. Alright. Mitral VOF. Kita tengok Okay. MR. MR systolic ke diastolic? Systolic. Huh? Systolic. Masa systolic. Sebab masa masa systolic mitral valve terpatutnya tutup kan? So sekarang ni masa systolic dia tak tutup habis. Dia ada regurgitation. So masa masa systolic dia akan ada sepatutnya systolic dia tutup. Sekarang ni dia longgar. So ada flow masa masa systolic. So dia a systolic type of murmur. Dengan sebab valve tu tak tutup betul-betul. So it's obscured the first heart sound. Kan? The difference, the uh, apa? Uh, regurgitation tu occurs throughout the systolic. You get pan systolic murmur. Dan sebab dia area ni dekat your ap apical area. Apical area. So that's why you get murmur tu dekat your apex. Murmur dekat apex. Sebab valve ni letaknya betul-betul dekat your apex. Kan? <coughs> okay. Masa diastolic ada murmur tak? Mitral regurg. Masa diastolic ada murmur tak? Tak ada murmur. Kenapa tak ada murmur? Sebab memanglah sepatutnya kena ada blood lalu. Ha, sebab dia memang sepatutnya kena lalu masa diastolic kan? Kan? So tak ada murmur So MR is a systolic type of murmur Okay So MR apa jadi? Sama kan? So fluid sepatutnya uh, daripada left ventricle Dia pump ke left, uh, left ventricle pump ke aorta Sekarang ni dia pump pergi ke atrium balik sikit So apa jadi? Kurang blood pergi ke AO Sepatutnya reduce systolic BP So apa body buat? Body akan increase heart rate, increase stroke volume. So jadi left ventricular hypertrophy and so on so forth. Okay. So this is MR. How about MS? MS? Systolic ke diastolic? Diastolic. Diastolic. Sebab masa systolic dia tutup lah. Dia dah sempit kan? Masa systolic dia Sempit. Masa diastolic. Sepatutnya flow daripada left atrium masuk ke left ventricle. Sekarang ada obstruction. Okay. Kita tengok. How about. So yang tricuspid akan lebih kurang sama dengan mitral. How about uh, pulmonary? PS. PS systolic ke diastolic? Systolic. Kenapa systolic? Sebab. Blood pump up from the ventricle. Ah, sebab sepatutnya daripada ventricle, dia senang dia jalan ke PA. Sekarang ada obstruction. Bila ada obstruction, dia akan cause, cause turbulent flow lah. Create turbulent flow. Bila create turbulent flow, sebab tu dia dapat systolic type of murmur. Dan you remember, kita punya ventricle punya contraction ni, dia tak sama. Dia mula tu, dia kurang sikit, lepas tu dia akan kuat sikit. So, and turbulent flow dia, dia ada ejection systolic type of murmur. Bila kat ujung-ujung tu, dia dah tak banyak turbulent flow, you can you cannot uh, hear anymore. So, the ejection type of murmur. Dia bukan pan systolic. 
So PR dia sama opposite lah. Okay. Uh, PS. PS, what happens to the lungs bila ada PS? What happens to your blood pressure bila ada PS? PS, what happens to your blood pressure? Increase. Kenapa increase? Sebab more resistant masa tak nak keluar tu. But do you do you measure tak PA pressure? Hmm, tak pasti. Bila you rasa pulse kan? You rasa pulse. Do you rasa PA punya pressure tak? Tak, you only rasa AO punya pressure kan? So PA pressure, you tak tak reflected dekat pulse. Betul tak? So PA ni daripada heart pergi ke lungs je. Kan? So your BP, you you measure BP, it will not be affected. Tapi what happens to the PA pressure? Diastolic, asistolic PA pressure, naik ke turun? Theoretically. Turun lah. Sebab kurang kan? Kurang blood to the, bila ada obstruction, blood akan kurang masuk ke pulmonary artery. So bila kurang, your PA pressure, systolic akan akan reduce. Systolic, systolic ni akan akan reduce. So blood akan kurang pergi dekat lungs. What happen bila blood kurang pergi kat lungs? Oligamic. Hmm? Oligamic lung fail. So oligamic lung fail. So bila you buat x-ray, you akan nampak reduce vascular marking. Lung tu akan nampak lagi lagi lusen, akan nampak lagi black. Sebab apa? Sebab kurang blood pergi dekat lungs. Oligamic lung fail. Lepas tu apa? Lepas tu what will happen to your right ventricle? Again, systolic ni kita boleh maintain. So body pun detect alamak. Lung dah kurang dapat blood ni. Nak kena push more. So your right ventricle sekarang ni dia uh, pushing against a resistance. So dia akan pump harder. What happen bila dia pump harder? Dia hypertroph. Dia jadi sado, dia jadi besar. So bila dia jadi besar, right ventricle duduknya di sini. Bila dia membesar, dia akan push heart jadi macam tu. Sebab tu dia jadi boot shape heart. Sebab right ventricle tempatnya di bawah. Sebab tu dia jadi boot shape heart. So bila you buat x-ray, you akan nampak boot shape heart, you akan nampak oligimic lung fail. Dia boleh jadi PS, boleh jadi heart failure tak? Can PS go into heart failure? Can PS go into heart failure? Tengok balik. Yes. Tengok balik. Oligamic lungs, right ventricular hypertrophy. Heart failure yes. apa? Cardiac failure apa signs dekat X-ray? Hyperemic. Hyperemic lung, cardiomegaly. Okay, I repeat my question. PS go into heart failure tak? No, sebab dia oligamic lung dan juga right ventricular hypertrophy, boot shape heart. So PS do not go into heart failure. PS do not go into heart failure. Sebab kurang fluid pergi dekat lungs. So do not go into heart failure. Okay. Clear? Clear setakat ni? Okay. Uh, how about AS? AS. Systolic ke diastolic? Systolic. 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 Ha? Systolic. Ha, okay. Uh, murmur ada murmur tak? Systolic. Okay. Dia ada systolic sound. Okay. Fine. Apa lagi finding? Sebab you, you remember AS ni atas ni dia pergi ke aorta. Aorta ni dekat-dekat ke atas ni. Dekat uh, tracheal punya area ni. Suprasternal notch ni. Bila you letak dekat sini, you akan dapat apa? You akan dapat murmur. You akan dapat murmur. You dapat murmur kat sini, you tahu it's already AS. Okay, what happens to your blood pressure bila you dapat AS? AS, aorta, kan? Pressure dekat aorta ni is determined by pressure daripada left ventricle kan? Sekarang ada obstruction dekat sini. Ada AS. What happens to your systolic blood pressure? Reduce. Reduce. Sebabnya kurang kan? 
So apa body akan buat? Dia akan pump harder lah. Left ventricle akan pump harder. Left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy, fluid yang kurang pergi kat sini. So lungs pun akan affected. Sebab apa? Sebab daripada uh, pulmonary vein ni ada pressure. So akan ada hyperemic lung fill juga. Kan? Systolic BP drop. Systolic BP drop. What happens to your diastolic BP? Diastolic? Diastolic maintain. So diastolic maintain. Systolic BP drop. Diastolic BP maintain. What happens to your pulse? Thready pulse. Thready pulse. Okay. Systolic BP drop. Diastolic BP maintain. So thready pulse. Narrow pulse pressure. Narrow pulse pressure. I got this eh, aortic stenosis for my professional exam in 2006. Uh, aortic stenosis. Damn. Kan, you rasa, uh, my patient tu, I rasa uh, radial pulse tak rasa. Brachial pulse tak rasa. Keratic pulse pun tak rasa. Kan. Ada keratic. Mm -hmm. Ada ada keratic brui. Uh, keratic brui. You oscatic ke sini, you dapat keratic brui. Because of the turbulent flow. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. AS. How about AR? Itu ya? Ha, ha, yes. Kenapa ke dalam AS yang bila BP drop tapi body heart paling composite jadi normal, so, normal, body, normal, normal, normal? Yes. Normal. Sebab macam ni. Body memang akan composite. Body akan increasekan heart rate. Body akan increasekan stroke volume. Body increase stroke volume. Sebab tu left ventricle hypertrophy. Tapi obstruction dia lower down. Dia problem dia is obstruction. So bila problem di obstruction, kalau body increase heart rate, dia akan increase banyak tak pressure dia? Not much. So oh. dia punya compensatory mechanism dia tak efektif. Body boleh naikkan resistance, total peripheral resistance causing vessel constriction. Tapi still dia tak boleh recover. Sebab apa? Sebab dia punya stroke volume dia tak boleh nak recover. Stroke volume dia impact. Sebab ada obstruction. Dia bukan shun. Dia obstruction. Okay. Okay. How about AR? What happens to... So AR, systolic ke diastolic? Diastolic. Diastolic. Sebab masa masa systolic memanglah blood kena pass through aortic valve kan? So tak adalah bunyi. So masa diastolic sepatutnya aortic valve ni tutup. So fluid daripada aorta tak patah balik. Sekarang ni ada regurgitation. So fluid daripada aorta patah balik. So what happens to your blood pressure sekarang? What happens to your blood pressure? Systolic BP? Effected tak systolic BP? AR? Okay. Theoretically yeah. tak affected. Theoretically tak affected. How about your diastolic? Diastolic BP affected tak? Effect. Affected. Effect. Sebab apa? Effect. Sebab masa diastolic, blood patah balik daripada aorta, patah balik masuk left ventricle. So, diastolic BP akan reduce. Diastolic BP akan reduce. Okay. You remember, Stalin law. Apa jadi? Bila fluid dah pump dah pergi aorta, patah, patah balik. So, left ventricle, masa diastolic, dia dapat blood daripada atrium kan blood daripada lung masuk left atrium masuk left ventricle dan juga dia dapat balik blood yang dia dah pump out so increase and diastolic volume bila increase and diastolic volume heart akan pump harder because stalling law so actually systolic bp akan naik sikit naik sikit lah. tak naik banyak akan naik sikit so now what happens to your pulse Collapse pulse. Dia akan jadi bounding pulse. Dia akan jadi bounding pulse. More bounding daripada PDA. You angkat against gravity. Dia akan more regurgitation. So, masa you angkat tu, dia punya diastolic BP akan lagi akan drop. So, that's why you get collapsing pulse. Dia punya pressure gradient systolic diastolic itu is more. Bila dia banyak, sebab itu you dapat all the signs of aortic regurgitation. Corrigan sign. You dapat head nodding. Sebab dia punya bounding dia bam 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 so dia punya kepala pun sampai goyang-goyang 
I hope you remember lah what is Trozier sign, Corrigan sign, uh, Dimuset, and uh, Quinky sign. You tengok dekat uh, apa nama you, you punya artery dekat nails ni, bila you tekan buat Quinky sign kan, you akan nampak dia pulsating. So apa pulsating? Sebab very wide pulse pressure. Wide pulse pressure. So the wide pulse pressure ni yang menyebabkan all the signs of aortic regurgitation. Pistol short murmur. Everything is because of the wide pulse pressure. Okay. Clear that? Clear that? So far? Clear? Clear. Okay. Let's see another lesion. Okay. Sekarang ni. Sekarang ni. So, biasanya pusing macam ni kan? Okay. Sekarang ni what happens is. Daripada right ventricle, sepatutnya dia pergi ke ke PA. What happens kalau right ventricle, dia pump ke aorta. So, aorta, dia turun ke sini. Oh, no. Let's, 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 let's. Sebelum kita begitu, baik kita begini dulu. Okay. What is uh, TOF? TOF. What is TOF? Tetralogy of fellow. Apa dia? Tetralogy of fellow. Apa dia? Overriding of aorta. So yang pertama, overriding of aorta. Lagi? VSD. Lagi? PS. Lagi? Right ventricular hypertrophy. So this is tetralogy of fellow. Dia mesti empat je. Kalau lebih daripada tu, dia tak jadi tetralogy of fellow. So dia ada overriding of aorta. So aorta ni, aorta ni sepatutnya duduk kat left ventricle kan? Sekarang ni aorta ni duduk kat dua-dua belah. That's overriding of aorta. Yang kedua dia ada VSD. Yang ketiga dia ada PS. Yang keempat dia ada right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay. You tengok lesion ni. What will happen? What, what type of murmur yang ada? Overriding of aorta. Aorta dapat daripada dua-dua. The both side. Kan? Uh, dia ada VSD. Dia ada PS. What type of murmur? Dia ada right ventricular hypertrophy. That's a good clue. What type of murmur? Systolic. Huh? Systolic. Okay, systolic murmur. What type of murmur? Is it VSD murmur or PS punya murmur? PS. Kenapa PS? Sebab PS dimosis. Okay, sebabnya adalah bila you bila ada PS, bila ada PS, what happens to the right ventricular pressure? Bila ada PS, Bila ada right ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular hypertrophy maknanya right ventricle tu bekerja keras. So what happens to the right ventricular pressure? Increase. Increase. Right ventricular pressure increase. Bila right ventricular pressure increase, what happens to the shunt dekat VSD ni? Reduce lah. Reduce. Pressure dia almost nak jadi sama. Bila pressure dia almost nak jadi sama, lepas tu pula dia ada overriding of aorta apa semua benda kan. So Pressure between right ventricle dengan left ventricle ni dia jadi lebih kurang sama. So bila jadi lebih kurang sama, tak ada banyak shunting masa VSD. VSD ni tak ada shunting. So shunting dia uh, bunyi mana? Turbulent flow dekat PS. Sebab itu TOF, you will not hear VSD punya murmur. You'll get a PS punya murmur. You'll get PS punya murmur. Okay. Sinus ke tak sinus? Apa causes sinusis? What causes sinusis? Sinusis bila ada right to left shun. So shun biasanya is left to right. Shun biasanya is a left to right kan daripada sebab left pressure lebih tinggi daripada right pressure kan so biasanya is a uh, uh, left to right shunt so sekarang ni contohnya 
dalam bila ada PS ada VSD. Right ventricular pressure naik. So dia boleh ada right to left shunt. Bila ada right to left shunt, right ni is a deoxygenated blood. Left is oxygenated blood. Right ni uh, left side blood yang merah. Right side blood yang biru sebab kurang oksigen. So bila ada right to left shunt. Sebab apa? Sebab right ventricular pressure dia tinggi. Ada right to left shunt. Ataupun dia ada bidirectional shunt. Kan? What happens is, blood yang pergi ke aorta ni sekarang mix with the blue blood. The deoxygenated blood daripada right ventricle. So that's why you get cyanosis. That's why you get cyanosis. Kenapa kita dapat, uh, kenapa dalam QOF dia ada problem kita panggil tech spells. Hypercyanotic spell. Infandibular spasm. Infandibular spasm sebabnya the, the PS tu dia boleh jadi infandibular, dia boleh jadi valvular, supravalvular, dia boleh ada banyak level. Kan? So kalau PS tu is at the infandibulum, kan? Banyak reason boleh menyebabkan infandibular spasm. Sebab tu treatment dia treatment for hypercyanotic spell ni apa? Apa treatment dia? Apa first thing yang kita buat? Oh, hypercyanotic spell is a very common question dalam exam eh. Apa kita buat? Pain management. Pain management. Kita bagi, bila pain management, muscle pun relax. Kita bagi morphine. Morphine causes muscle relax, relax, relaxation. Morphine causes smooth muscle relaxation. Kan? So, infandibulum pun relax sikit. Kita bagi apa lagi? Kita bagi fluid. Bila kita bagi more fluid, fluid akan increase venous return. Akan increase venous return dekat right ventricle. Akan push more. So, dia boleh overcome uh, infandibulum. Kan? Sebab tu bila dry, bila patient kering, dehydrated, akan jadi more blue, more cyanose contohnya. Patient crying boleh jadi hypersyanotic spell. Kan? So kita buat yang dia punya, kita buat squatting position. Sebab bila squat, increasekan venous return. Ha, benda macam tu. Okay, hypersyanotic spell ni is important lah. Dan kita boleh bagi propranolol, beta blockers. Sebab propranolol is a smooth muscle punya relaxant. So dia akan relaxkan dia smooth muscle. Sebab tu kita bagi propranolol. Okay, clear? Okay, TOF eh? Satu TOF clear eh? Betul, sorry. Ha. Betul, betul, sorry. Yang ya. bagi masa relaxation ni dalam keadaan apa saya putus-putus ni? -putus. So, kita bagi propranolol. Bukan bagi masa relaxation yang macam saxametonium ke apa. Kita bagi, sebab propranolol, it relaxes the smooth muscle. Propranolol, beta blocker, dia relaxes the smooth muscle. Dia act dekat mana? Dia act dekat your beta beta receptor kan so beta receptor ni dia akan relax sebab dia is a beta blocker kan so dia akan among the effect of propranolol ni dia akan relaxkan smooth muscle dekat infandibulum so bila dia, dia relaxkan smooth muscle dekat infandibulum kuranglah infandibular stenosis dia infandibular spasm dia so propranolol is the treatment okay fine clear okay let's look at another lesion Let's look at bila ada, so sekarang ni pusing dia macam ni kan, daripada body masuk vena cava, masuk right atrium, masuk right ventricle. Daripada right ventricle, sekarang ni sepatutnya dia pergi ke PA. Tapi sekarang ni dia pergi ke aorta. Right ventricle, pump ke aorta. Right ventricle, pump ke aorta. So, uh, right ventricle, pump ke aorta. Atau pergi kat body, masuk vena cava, masuk right atrium, masuk right ventricle, right ventricle pergi kat aorta. Okay. Daripada lungs, masuk pulmonary vein, masuk left atrium, pergi left ventricle, sepatutnya pergi kat aorta. Tapi sekarang dia pergi ke pulmonary artery. Dia pergi ke pulmonary artery. Masuk ke lungs. Lungs masuk pulmonary vein, masuk left atrium, left ventricle, masuk PA balik. What is this called? Transposition of great artery. Transposition of great artery. Sorry ya. Eh? So this is TGA. So apa jadi pada baby ni? Compatible with life tak? Boleh hidup tak? No, except if there is under defect. Except if there are shunts. So shunt dia boleh jadi kat mana? Dia boleh jadi tiga level of shunt. Sama ada dekat BSD atau ASD 
ataupun PDA. So, tiga level. At least kena ada salah satu. Baru boleh hidup. Tapi kalau dia hidup pun, what will happen to the baby? Will the baby be sinus tak? Yes lah. Sebab aorta gets blood from the right ventricle. What we see, kita nampak ni, kita nampak ni is from blood from aorta kan? Kita punya colour ni is from blood daripada aorta. Kan? So, aorta sekarang dapat blood daripada right ventricle. Walaupun ada shunt, the, the child will still be sinus. Sebab kita dapat blood daripada right ventricle. It's a deoxygenated blood. It's a deoxygenated blood. So, shunt ni kena ada dekat sama dia dekat ventricular level ataupun atrial punya level ataupun dekat ductal punya level. So, TGA is not compatible with life unless dia ada this three lesion. Either one. At birth, kalau baby tak ada lesion, kita akan buat beberapa benda. Kita akan kita akan start dia, kita akan buat, kita panggil balloon atrial septostomy. Kita buat lubang, kita create ASD. Uh, ataupun kita uh, start ubat, start uh, prostaglandin untuk bukakan, maintain dia punya pattern, uh, dia punya ductus arteriosus. Dan, dan kita buat, kita boleh buat operation lah. Contohnya macam uh, blalock toxic shunt untuk create something lesion macam PDA. Lepas tu treatment dia apa? Treatment dia arterial switch. Arterial switch ni buat major operation, kita pindahkan aorta masuk ke tempat dia. Uh, apa nama, uh, pamulai artery masuk ke tempat dia balik. Okay. Sorry kan? Eh? Sekejap. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, hospital call. Okay, let's see another lesion. Okay, again, this is your Allah. This is, ay, I don't know what I did. Allah, yeah. Hello? Hello? Ah. Ah, what did you say? Patient problem. Okay. Alright. So, uh, kita nak satu lagi region eh. So, this is your heart. Okay. This is your lungs. Allah. Okay. And this is your body kan. So, blood daripada body masuk ke right atrium. Kan. Okay. Blood daripada body masuk right atrium. Okay. Sekarang ni, your, your, you remember tadi kita cakap pasal TGA kan? 
Okay, jap let me. Okay, so uh, lama, jap jap sorry sorry sorry. Kita draw balik eh, kita draw balik. So this is your heart. Kan blood daripada body masuk right atrium, masuk right ventricle, right ventricle dia pergi ke aorta. Dia pergi ke AO. Kan? Lepas tu blood daripada lungs pergi ke left atrium, masuk left ventricle, dia pergi ke PA. This is TGA kan? Ni TGA yang kita discuss tadi. So, sekarang ni around 8 6 to 8 weeks, body kita perasan, eh alamak, there's atrial switch. Ah uh, arteri kita silap pasang ni, body perasan. Body perasan, silap pasang arteri dia. So, what did the body do? Arteri dah silap pasang, tak boleh buat dah. So, dia pusingkan dekat tengah-tengah ni. Ni dia pusing kat tengah-tengah ni. So apa jadi? Blood daripada body kan. If this is your heart, empat chamber masuk ke right atrium. Masuk ke right atrium kan. So, tadi yang blood daripada mana pergi ke PA? Daripada left ventricle. So right atrium dia pusingkan dekat tengah-tengah ni, dia pergi ke left ventricle. Left ventricle tadi pergi ke PA kan. So left ventricle pergi ke PA. Lepas tu blood daripada lungs masuk ke left atrium. Left atrium pula tadi kan yang pergi ke aorta apa? Yang pergi ke aorta right ventricle. So dia dah pusingkan sini right ventricle. Lepas tu dia pergi ke aorta. Okey. Ini kita panggil CC TGA. Congenitally corrected TGA. Problem tak? Nampak macam problem. problem. Kenapa problem? Sebab uh... Tu ventricular masa lagi ventricle tu berbeza Tak cukup pumping Yes because you remember Your left ventricle ni sado Your left ventricle ni is very strong So left ventricle Is used to pump blood At 100 to 120 Systolic kan? So sekarang ni dia kena pump ke Lungs je And lungs ni biasanya PA PA pressure biasa dalam 60 to 80 So sekarang high pressure yang pergi ke lungs Your right ventricle, dia biasa pump at 60 to 80 for adult lah. Kan? Sekarang ni, dia terpaksa pump ke whole body. Dia nak kena pump at 100 to 120. So what happens? Your right ventricle ni cannot cope. Your right ventricle cannot cope and your left ventricle pula, dia terpaksa pump. Dia memang pump kuat. Dan bila dia pump kuat, problem lah. Your dia lebih pulmonary hypertension. Kan? Nampak macam okay. Tapi because of the musculature ni, It cause more problem. So pulmonary hypertension lagi problem. So what kita buat kadang kita in, kita introducekan PS. Kita ikat yang kat sini. Introducekan PS. Kita create pulmonary stenosis. Bila kita create pulmonary stenosis, what will happen? Left ventricle. Oh alamak ada orang cabar. So left ventricle akan pump harder. So it's a vicious process. Kalau TGA ni kita boleh ambil potong. Buat ambil PA letak kat sini. Ambil ambil aorta letak kat sini. Ambil PA letak kat sini. Kita boleh buat arterial switch. Tapi kalau CCTGA, there's not much yang kita boleh buat. So, prognosis dia very poor lah. Kalau CCTGA. Okay. Alright. That's it lah. Ingat nak sempat nak discuss pasal yang renal. Tapi tak sempat tak larat lah. Satu lah. Okay. Any question? Faham tak? Faham ke tak faham? Boleh, boleh. Faham. Clear, ha, eh? So I, I do think I do hope it's useful lah Untuk korang semua kan uh, At least faham lah beberapa konsep ni I think bila you understand Bila you nampak pressure-pressure dia Then you you understand Kenapa jadi this type of murmur uh, I, I don't know lah If you think it's not useful uh, I, I don't know but for me uh, From my practice I do think it's useful At least for me That's why I'm very keen to share Okay Any question last? Zik kalau ada sikit. Ya, ya. Sorry. I have a question. Yep. Uh, in collapsing pulse, um, dia punya definition means dia akan lama-lama dia akan hilang kan the pulse. Ah, yep. So uh, I don't really understand why. Maknanya dia So dia akan more the, the shunting will be more against pressure. Sebab you angkat gravity kan? Bila you Sampai angkat. dia punya sistolik dia pun hilang lah macam tu. Sistolik dia pun akan kurang. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Faham? Okay, thank you, Doktor. Okay. Satu lagi question tadi? 
tak dia, uh, dia bukan question uh, kata nanti sebab Pak Rinal tu pun sebenarnya saya, saya kalau uh, saya boleh saya nak dengar ya Dato Syah pasal Pak Rinal tu sebenarnya ah kalau saya cuba je boleh boleh insyaallah jangan tanya gaya dah dah tak Uh, okay je, it's okay, kita boleh arrange I'm okay hmm. yeah. Kalau you nak buat semua raya pun It's okay je, no problem Okay lah, alright It's already uh, 1pm I think it has gone a bit too long Let's uh, stop here uh, I'll share the link uh, After this lah Ataupun I'll, I'll share the video in our pediatric department punya YouTube channel Then you can review uh, later on Okay, alright Let's end our session here uh, Let's end with Tasbih Kafar in Suratul Asr Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you doctor Thank you doctor Thank you doctor